Hello friends, are you stuck generating low resolution images with your Red Potato PC and just wish you could generate the big stuff, the full HD, 4K, even 8K resolution images just like the big boys and gals? Now you can, even with your old Potato PC, as long as you have a GPU with at least 4GB of VRAM so you can run Stable Diffusion. But apart from that, you're golden. Let's have a look at control net tiles. And hey, what do you call a group of pixels who want to change society? Resolutionaries. So today we'll be using control net. And if you don't have that installed, I recommend you checking the previous video, which I'm going to put in the top right corner now. If you're on a computer, if you're on a mobile, you're going to have to um, check the video description. So I have this image here. That I have rendered inside Stable Fusion. This is a 512 by 512 image, and we will upscale it far beyond than what your GPU usually can handle. And we will do this with Control Net tiles together with something called Ultimate Stable Fusion Upscale. What you're going to do first is go into your extensions and you're going to check available, press the little button here, load from, search for upscale i did that with Control f and then typed upscale and you're going to find this ultimate sd upscale and just install that click the button here and then apply and restart ui after that you're going to go into image to image and we're going to load our image here all right so i've loaded my image here which is an old man portrait in 512 by 512 we're going to add the default negative styles here you can find that in the video description below now you don't need to use a prompt now i'm using the same prompt that i used when i generated this image you can just run it blank but i've noticed that you will get a little more detail when you do run prompts for this we're going to leave everything default here except for the denoising strength now you can play a little bit with this. It's going to be dependent on your image. But I found for this particular image, for the first pass between 0.1 and 0.4 was fairly good. Now for the second pass, you need to go lower. But for the first pass, you could go a little higher. We're going to set this to 0.15. Then we're going to check control net here. And we're going to drop the same image down there. We're going to enable that. And we're going to set our preprocessor to tile resample. Now, if you don't have this, you need to update your control net. Just go into your extensions, press check for updates. You're probably going to see that there's an update for control net, then apply and restart, and, and then go back. After that, you're going to load your model. And here, we're going to load the control 1.1 SD 1.5 tile. Now, it's very important that you have the one that says 1 e here because this file and this model was updated after control net 1.1 was released so if you have the old file which says u instead of e you need to download this file and also if you don't have it at all download this file and put it in your extensions control net models file just like in the tutorial for how to install control it remember you know in the beginning where i pointed up to the link you're going to leave the rest default here as well, except that control mode here. I'm putting this in control net is more important. Now, this isn't super important. You can play with these and see how it changes your image. As for the script here, we installed the ultimate SD upscale. If you can't see this, you need to restart your stable diffusion. If you still can't see it after that, you are probably inside text to image and you can't use it in text to image. You need to be inside image to image. Once you've set that, you're going to change this target size type to scale from image size. That will mean that you will ignore all these settings here and just resize the image by two times. You can change this however you want. Now, I prefer two times here. Now, I'm going to use the four times ultra sharp model. I'm going to link that in the description below if you want to download it. If you do, just download it, go inside your Stable Fusion folder, go into your models, ESR Jan, and just drop it in there. See, here's my 4x ultra sharp point PTH. The rest of the settings here, we're going to leave default. I played around a lot with the seams fix here. To be honest, 
I checked some of the FAQ and some of the settings I saw on Reddit and I did a lot of testing and then on that, honestly, on a general scale for most images, multiple images, I wasn't able to reproduce good settings apart from just using none. And I can quickly show you this as I did a test in Photoshop. All images will have tiles. And if you look at an original image here, you might look at this and say, well, this looks fine, Seb. If you look closely, there are tile lines here, here, and you can see that more clearly here. And we can emphasize this a little further. So here you can see a line going down. Here is a line the side here. And here's a line. Here's a line. So there are a lot of tiles in the image and the seams are showing. And I did a couple of tests for this with uh, this is just nothing. So this is, I mean, it's fairly okay. I did a couple of tests with band pass, and you can see here's a band pass where it actually gets bigger. Here's another band pass where it's similar, but not a lot of changes. I played a lot with the padding. I mean, you can see changes in the image, especially in the middle here. It, it gets a little better, but it's still fairly big on the outside. I played with half tile offsets, and they're kind of changing the seams to be these lines and it doesn't really help the image if you look closely you can see all the little lines same with various blur settings here's another one which doesn't just doesn't get better at all and as well with the intersect just add some sort of a grid going around here and here i found the settings from the official faq if you compare this to using nothing at all this is the faq settings this is nothing at all I mean, it's, I wouldn't say it's an improvement at all, but perhaps it's just for this image and perhaps it works uh, a lot better for, for other images. I don't want to bash on anything. It's just in my testing, I couldn't reproduce better results with seams fixes. So I haven't been using seams fixes. So we're setting seams fix at none. But if you find a setting that you feel this is much better than none, send me a message on Discord, tell me your settings, I'd love to test them. After this, we're scrolling up and we are generating. And now it's gonna generate four tiles, 512 by 512, and then mesh these together. And as you can see here, we have an image that's very similar to the left one, but it's twice the size, or four times the size, if you, depending on how you wanna count, and if you care about maths. Now what you can do with this is just take this 1024, 1024, just drag and drop it to the left here and now you can generate again and now this 1024 by 1024 will go 2048 by 2048. Now this will take significantly longer because it now has to render 16 tiles instead of the four that we did before but it's still generating in 512 by 512. So it shouldn't be a heavy load on your GPU, just a longer session. So it's just uh, like generating 16 images in a batch or 16 batches of one image, depending on how they coded it. I I'm not sure to be honest. So here now we have a uh, 2048 by 2048 pixels made in, well, about 30 seconds on my RTX 3080. Now I can go even further with this. So if I drag and drop this again, and generate again, it will do two times once more. Now this will take significantly longer even on, on my computer because now it's going to 4096 by 4096 pixels. So now it's generating 64 tiles instead. And now if you're a fairly advanced user of Stable Diffusion, you might have seen some other YouTubers doing videos a while ago on the Stable Diffusion ultimate upscales extension and you might think to yourself or write a comment that says wait a minute seb this is just uh, the ultimate uh, extension doing all the work i've seen this before it's just uh, the same tiles and let me show you in a bit we just need to finish this render first and then i'll show you what i'm talking about because we're doing more than just upscaling this with the upscaling model and that extension and that's where control net ties into this but um, we'll get to that in a second now our 4000 by 4000 image has finished and if we do a comparison 
let me show you here. We are losing a little bit of detail in every step. At this stage of development, that is to be expected. But let me show you what I'm talking about. This is our original 512 by 512. This is our 1024 by 1024. Still fairly good. Now we're moving up to the 2048 by 2048. You can see it much more clearly when we jump up to the 4000 by 4000 image. If you go back and forth between 2 and 4, you can see here, there's a noticeable difference. And if you look at the skin, this is 2000, 4000, 2000, 4000. This one looks a bit smoother and we're kind of losing detail. And this is sort of the issue with this tiles workflow at this moment. I'm hoping it will be improved and maybe it can already be with the settings. But if we zoom in on this, this is 100%. You can see in the eye here that this is a lot of detail. This is a lot of detail and it, it's it's fairly crazy to be honest. If you compare this to person up here, we have the eye here. So here are the eyes side by side. This is our original render 512 by 512 and this is our upscaled 4096 by 4096. I'm going to try and render a 8,000 by 8,000 to get a real 8K, just to show you that the thumbnail wasn't a clickbait. But we'll get to that in a second. I wanted to talk to you about what ControlNet actually does for this. Let's go back a couple of steps here, and let's go back to our 512 by 512 image. When we're rendering this, you saw previously, everything was great. You can, if you're using denoising strength here, to change the image, to so say we want to change a lot of the detail, and we're generating this, we'll get four tiles to create a new image. It will look similar to the original, it will be very close to the original, but it will be another image because we're adding more noise, it'll be a different image. As you can clearly see here, the wrinkles are deeper and there's a different color tone in his face. Now, if you didn't use Control Net for this, let's disable this. And now we're mainly using the ultimate SD upscale and image to image. And the tiling here will still work. However, since we're using a higher denoising, we're losing the coherence of the image. And as you can see, our result is all over the place. And it can be seen much more clearer with the denoising strength one. Now we will lose everything about previous face here and we will get four new faces and again if we enable control net even at denoising strength one we will retain his face now the image will be changed much much more than before but we will see the resemblance so even though you can't actually see the changes between using control net or not, when you're having a denoising strength of say 0 0.1, 0 0.2, the difference is there. And I've checked it in detail in Photoshop, looking at the curves and everything. So I tried my best to research this for you guys. Anyway, this was my uh, workflow that I've pieced together by other people's tips and tricks on, uh, well, both my Discord, on Reddit, testing stuff by myself. And I feel that this workflow works really well. Now you could do something like go back to denoising the, the settings we had previously. And I know some people just instead of going by steps like I did, they do a scale to like four here instantly. Let's just type four and let's generate this. And while this works as well, it takes a longer time to generate this image. So you can't see the process as you go through the steps. Now with a denoising strength of 0 0.15, it's not going to be a lot of changes. But if you have a higher value, you might want to see the steps as you iterate forward. Here are the two images side by side, where the left one, these are both 2048 by 2048, where the left one has gone through steps and the right one went four times upscaling. And it's up to you to decide which result you prefer best for your image. And it might be different for each image. 
or you find something that you prefer best, it's uh, up to you. Anyway, let's try and see if we can generate that 8000 by 8000 image. So we're going straight from the 512 by 512. We're doing this at a maximum 16 scale. I'm going to start the render and then I'm going to go get some food because this will probably take a while. I'm going to fast forward it for you guys and uh, I'll see you in a bit. All right, so I not only had time to eat my second dinner, I also had time to eat it because this took about 30 minutes. And to the left here, we have our previous 4K image, which were... Um, which we did in steps. And as you can see, this image is a little smoother in texture, something that you will notice while working uh, in the steps workflow that uh, we did in this video. The second one is our 8K resolution that we went from a 512 image straight to 8K. And here we have much sharper for details in general. However, the image is not great. I mean, it's amazing. Don't get me wrong. It's fantastic that we can get an image as big as 8K. I mean, you could go even bigger on a low VRAM GPU, basically anything that can consistently output 512 by 512 images in, in batches. So this has been 256 tiles, but we're starting to see it break up a little bit. You can start to see here, you can see the tiling going on in the simple background here on the image you can't really see it. And if you zoom in, here's 100% of 8K. We've lost a lot of the detail here. I mean, there's detail, but it's sort of fake detail, you know? Eyelashes aren't supposed to look like this. If we look at the 4K image at 100%, while it's not perfect, it's not a photo, it's actually much closer to reality looking at the eyelashes and the eye here. Now, would this image, would this 8K be better if I ran it from the 4K to the 8K? But it also would smooth out the textures even more. I think it would mess up the image. I think a fine something that I will try moving forward is working in less steps. I still like the steps approach because you have you don't have to sit and wait 30 minutes for an image and then I'm not, don't know what you get out of it. But maybe work in like upscale four times instead of two times. Maybe do that. That way it might retain more texture and detail in the image. But we'll see. It's all evolving this. If you find a workflow that you feel is the perfect one, let me know in the comments below. And until then, this is pretty game changing. Anyone can generate high resolution images on their almost potato PCs, potato GPUs at least, 4 gigabytes and up. I hope you learned something today. If you like this content, like and subscribe, but I'm not your boss. Do whatever you want. Appreciate it though. As always, have a good one. See ya.